So I just use these. These are 24 inch pieces of cable, 16 gauge. I already have disconnect ends pressed onto them, crimped on rather. I'll just go ahead and cut one end off. Kind of waste, but you know, it, it saves you from having to crimp them. And you're going to need a little bit to run there, so just cut a little bit about that much off on this particular setup. And then we'll go ahead and use these nifty wire strippers here to strip these. If you don't have a pair of these, you should really look into it. This is only in there on about 10 bucks. I would highly recommend it as they make your life very very easy when it comes to stripping wires okay just go ahead and uh, kind of twist the copper strands together to make sure it doesn't fray apart when you go to insert it through the holes and stuff and such so what you're going to do Connect red over here and this positive one. The easiest way to do it, connect negative over here on this negative side. All right, and then we need to solder these in place. All right, I find it's easy to hit it with some solder, get it flowing, and bam, and you're done. Do it the other side. I just hit the tip with some solder, get it going. Hit the wire. Make sure everything's hot. Bam. Done. Alright, now very important, you need to get, when you do a solder joint, whoa, let's back out here. You need to get everything hot. You can't just get the wire hot when you do it, otherwise you'll have what's known as a cold solder joint. You hear that? No cold solder joints, okay? None. We do not we do not like cold solder joints. Cold solder joints are for pussies. Alright. So now to make this parallel connection. What we need to do here is take these little wires that we cut off and one in this hole and then it will connect right there. This is how I do it. There's probably other ways, but this is very, very easy. I don't want to get out of focus here. What are we in focus? I, yeah, 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 yeah. We fogged up there. What's the problem? Alright. And here we go, this this one. Let's see if you guys can see this. Oh, maybe I should come into it on this side. For the best camera angle possible here. Let's see. Okay, good camera angle. Alright, and getting hot. Tap it on here. Get a text message. Bam, everything's hot. You can see the solder flow in on everything. Bam, you're done. That's it. That's all you gotta do. And then over here, I need, I need some more solder. So we're getting short over here. Alright, let's grab this big wad. Did I say big wad? I got a big wad of solder here. Got a big wad of solder. Alright, and then we're gonna go ahead and, uh, this right there. Get everything hot. Got my fresh tip. Alright, come on. Come on with it. Get it get there. Come on. What are you doing? Alright, it's flowing. Yeah, let it let it flow. Oh, pop it. It's done. Blow on it a little bit, you know, give it a little give it a little tap test, you know, make sure wiggle it around here, make sure it's not going anywhere. Alright, yeah, solid, solid, solid. Alright, the other little piece we cut off goes from here. Yikes. So 
straighten this straight out real fast. It makes my life a little easier. Alright. And this other one goes from there. And over to there. And that's what it should look like. Now you have parallel jacks. Let me just solder it. Do I say solder funny? Is that is that how you say it? I don't think I say it right. I don't really care. I don't want that to be poking. You can't. One thing, if you cut, if you strip the wire too long, you may have a chance of, you know, poking somewhere you don't want to be poking. So just make be very careful, and always be sure to test everything out before you. Before you ship something out to your customer or use it on your two thousand dollar guitar head or something that you don't want any problems, any short uh any shorts or anything. Alright, looking good, looking good, looks great. Alright, so when it's done, this is what you should have for parallel jacks. This is what kind of thing you should be looking at here. And of course, with parallel jacks like this, you can use either input for the cabinet, for the speaker, either one for the input, and then the other one you can just use the daisy chain to another cabinet. So say the cabinet this panel goes in is 8 ohms the speaker is whatever you wired up it's 8 ohms you plug it daisy chain it to another 8 ohm cabinet and then your total load is 4 ohms parallel easy good stuff see that right there that's what you want 